Hi folks, welcome to uh, the screencast for A2PE Exercise Physiology. Today we're going to be looking at something called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Uh, this really underpins everything that you'll be looking at within energy over the forthcoming weeks with uh, Rich and myself. So please grab a pen and paper, uh, take notes, pause it as you wish, but it's really important that you understand the key concepts uh, of this screencast. Okay, so a question that we need to answer is basically where does our energy supply come from? Now, think about sports that we do. Uh, we need to meet the demands of exercise and our muscles require a constant supply of energy. Now, we get this energy from a number of sources, mainly our food. However, our food must be broken down into ATP. And that's what we are going to be looking at uh, today. Now, ATP is a high energy compound that is found in your muscles. Now, ATP is the only immediately usable source of energy in the body that we can use for muscular contractions. However, ATP does not last forever and it needs to be resynthesized or rebuilt. And it does this by three energy systems, which we'll look at in more detail in the weeks to come. And these three energy systems are the ATP-PC system, or the Alactic Energy System. And this is an energy system that is predominantly used by a 100 meter sprinter. The second energy system that we will look at in the weeks to come is the Lactic Acid System. And this is an energy system that is predominantly used by a 400 meter runner. And finally, there is the aerobic system, which is an energy system that uh, a marathon runner would predominantly use. Okay, so let's look at what adenosine triphosphate is made up of. First of all, we have an adenosine molecule. Then we have three phosphates. And these phosphates are held together by high energy bonds. And that gives us adenosine triphosphate or ATP. And ATP is fine to use in the, in the exams or with any work you do for uh, Rich and myself. So there's a basic structure of ATP. Okay, so here we have uh, ATP. Now we need energy to be released to provide um, the energy for muscular contractions. And this is how this is done. An enzyme called ATPase breaks the bond between the final two phosphates. And in doing this, it releases the energy required for muscular contractions. Now in releasing this energy, this is termed an exothermic reaction. And this means that there is a release of potential energy going to the muscles. Now this energy only gives us two seconds worth of energy. Now this leaves behind a compound called adenosine diphosphate or ADP. Now this ADP can't provide energy until it has become or resynthesized back into ATP. Now in order to resynthesize ADP, which you can see on the screen, back into ATP, additional energy is required to add the phosphate back to resynthesize ATP, which we have on the screen. Now in doing this, this is called an endothermic reaction. And this is a chemical reaction that requires energy to be added in order for it to progress. And this gives us adenosine 
triphosphate or ATP again. So just remember ATP is what we need to be resynthesized in order for energy to be released. However, in releasing the final phosphate, it only gives us two seconds worth of energy for muscular work. So we need to find out now how we get our energy to help us resynthesize ATP. So how do we get energy to resynthesize ATP? Now the body has three energy systems which we briefly touched on at the start of the screencast. We have the ATP PC system. We have the lactic acid system. And we have the aerobic energy system. These three energy systems supply the energy to assist with resynthesizing ATP from ADP. And we'll be looking at these three energy systems in detail in the weeks to come. Okay, just some important theory um, for you to understand, and it's really good practice for you to understand uh, these points at this early stage in the year. Now the three energy systems that we've just looked at do not work in isolation. They work together to provide the energy for ATP resynthesis. Now a major contributing factor on each energy system's contribution on helping with ATP resynthesis is the intensity and duration of exercise. Now we'll look at uh, intensity and duration in more detail in lessons. However, it's really important to remember that these two key points, intensity and duration, really uh, underpin which energy system is used and why. Okay, finally, just some key points for you to uh, take note of. ATP is the only immediately usable source of energy in the human body for work. ATP alone can only provide energy for two seconds. ATP needs to be resynthesized from ADP. And ATP is resynthesized from three energy systems. And these three energy systems via coupled reactions supply energy to resynthesize ATP. Okay, so that's a screencast on ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Uh, please go over it as you need to. Uh, those of you who have the A2PE textbooks or revision guides, please look at the page uh, that describes ATP or finding that uh, there are some good books in the library as well that you can use. Please bring your notes to the lesson and Rich and I will go through it in the lesson with you um, this week. Okay guys well done thanks as always and up the baggies.